Spray Tips with Tom Wolf is brought to you by Loveland Products, makers of LI700 penetrating non-ionic surfactant with Lesitec technology. My name is Tom Wolf, and uh, this is Spray Tips with Tom for this week. Um, we're going to start off with a question, and we're going to take the whole episode this time to answer this one question because it's a very good one. Um, the question was emailed to us, and it says, I have three spots for different nozzles on my new sprayer. I want burn off, in crop, and fungicide. What three should I have? Five to 15 gallons per acre. That's a very common question, and it's a, it's a very good one. And um, we basically uh, are now using these kinds of turrets that uh, come with most sprayers. You can get them in different numbers of uh, configurations, but you, you typically have three, four, or five nozzle tips available on any one wheel, and then you just put the one that you need into place, and when you do something different, you, you just rotate a different one into place. It's very quick and easy. So we want to populate this with the right nozzles. And what I've done here is I've identified the main nozzles that are in play currently, uh, in Western Canada at least, and to some degree in Eastern Canada, and I've identified them here on this board, and we want to just briefly talk about them. The typical go-to nozzle that compromises uh, coverage and drift control well is the so-called low-pressure air induction tip. And there's about four or five different ones. We'll cover most of them today, but there's certainly possibly others as well that we want to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, in, in really just chronological order in which they appeared on the market, and for no other reasons are they ordered in this way, uh, we have the air bubble jet as the first one, a uh, commonly used nozzle in Western Canada, uh, produces a, a, a nice looking spray pattern between about uh, 30 and about 100 PSI, and uh, is about coarse, medium to coarse in its spray quality. The Hypro Guardian Air, is also known as the John Deere Low Drift Air, same nozzle, is the second one here. This is one that was actually on private label to Syngenta in the UK for a number of years and they uh, wanted to use it with the Amistar fungicide, which is Quadris in North America. And they have developed a nozzle that is very similar actually to the air bubble jet. It's an air induction tip, uh, and it produces that coarse spray quality on average. Uh, the third one is the Greenleaf Air Mix. Uh, this one uh, became very popular in Western Canada, partly because it has a very good price point, and uh, uh, again, does about the same thing, operates well between 30 and about 100 PSI, produces about a medium spray, and uh, similar to the other three. T-Jet came on the market as well with their version. The T-Jet AIXR is one that they have, and it's a little bit finer than their other one, which is the T-Jet AI. Again, otherwise very, very similar. All these nozzles are plastic. All these nozzles have very good wear characteristics. Um, in Eastern Canada, you also have the Hardy Mini Drift, uh, which is not available in the West, and it's the same nozzle as the Leckler IDK. Leckler basically manufactures that for Hardy on a private label arrangement. We also have non-induced, non-air induced low drift nozzles and they're very important, particularly for the case world. And uh, we're now looking at the Wilger combo jet nozzles. These are SR and MR. For all intents and purposes, they're exactly the same as the air induction tip. They certainly don't have air induction, but their spray quality is about the same and their performance characteristics in terms of uh, drift and coverage is also the same. So there's absolutely no reason to avoid these nozzles uh, for any other one. Uh, some of these companies, as I said, TJET makes more than one. Uh, Greenleaf also does. They certainly make a, a, a have a large selection. They also make the Greenleaf Turbo Drop, which is also still a very good nozzle to be used. It's a little bit coarser than this one, the Air Mix. A little bit more money, but a very versatile nozzle. Uh, Hypro and John Deere uh, also make um, a coarser spray uh, nozzle, the low, uh, the Ultra Low Drift or the Ultra Low Drift Air, or ULA as John Deere likes to call it. So you do have a little bit more selection here than, than what I've just listed here. But this is uh, the, the, the type of nozzle that will probably do 75% of your work for you. So that's the category of nozzle we want to start off with. Now, the question is, the, the, you know, the 3 to 5 US for burn off, the, the 7 to 10 US for in crop, and maybe the 10 to 15 for fungicide or late season uses. This is where you need to consult a catalog. And I've got a catalog ready. <laughs> and I've simply opened it to a page here where you, uh, you basically just uh, go to these charts here and match your expected travel speed, your expected uh, carrier volume, 
and find out uh, the kind of nozzle that you uh, you uh, you should be selecting uh, in terms of flow rate. There's also some online calculators that will help you make that determination. So for example, in this case, uh, if for example you were planning to go about 14 miles per hour, you would simply look for the, uh, well let's say 15 because that happens to be a column in this chart, 15 miles per hour uh, you would be, and you want to go to about uh, let's say 5 US gallons per acre for your pre-seed burnoff, you would simply go to the 15 mile per hour column and you would run your finger down that column until you hit 5 US gallons per acre. In this case, the first time you see that is at a 115 PSI with the 015 size range. You carry on and you see one uh, similar number, maybe a 4.8 or a 5.1, at about 60 PSI for the 02, and so on and so forth. And you can make a decision based on being in the middle of the pressure range of that nozzle. So you want to arrive at your gallons, your target gallons and travel speed, at, in this case for this nozzle, uh, the Hyper Guardian Air, at about uh, 60 to 70 PSI, and then that'll be your solution. And you might have to tweak your water volumes or your travel speeds ever so slightly to get, to get the solution. And that's where we go with that, and we simply uh, then will repeat that exercise for your in-crop herbicide uh, and maybe your late season sprays, fungicides, desiccants, uh, pre-harvest situations. Uh, simply go down a different column uh, if you want to change your travel speed and end at a different water volume, and there, and, and there you go. There's a number of online tools available to help you make that, that selection. But I think an important part of the question that wasn't really stated was, are these nozzles the right nozzles for all my uses? Are they good enough for pre-seed burn-off and in-crop and fungicide? And the answer is, roughly speaking, yes. Your target droplet size for all these applications is about coarse, and all these nozzles produce a coarse spray at their various flow rate offerings. All nozzles tend to get a little coarser when you go to higher flow rates. So as you get to your fungicide and your higher water volume situations, you might be finding that the spray has become very coarse or even extremely coarse, even though you've, you've bought into a, a low pressure air induced nozzle. In that case, a different kind of nozzle might be appropriate. And the, the best answer for uh, sort of mitigating something getting too coarse is to go to a twin fan nozzle. A twin fan nozzle now will put the same flow out uh, that used to go at one nozzle orifice out two orifices and therefore uh, because they're smaller orifices the spray tends to get a little finer and you can move back into a more reasonable spray quality. So if you were going to a 15 gallon per acre situation then you might be looking at a twin fan nozzle uh, to maintain a medium to coarse kind of spray quality that gives you good coverage and efficacy. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll have a, a quick look at some patterns of these nozzles and, and I'll try to make a point about uh, how they differ and how they're the same from each other. This is a conventional flat fan nozzle operating at about 40 psi. It's a 110 degree nozzle. I just wanted to use it as a reference point. Uh, this kind of a nozzle, uh, the 110 degree as I mentioned earlier, uh, is a, a desirable fan angle because it allows the, the spray pressure to be quite low without losing its angle, its pattern. Uh, on the downside, the conventional nozzle tends to be much too fine even at intermediate spray pressure. So you can see all the drift coming off this nozzle. Want to avoid that. The first nozzle on the market in terms of low pressure air induction was the air bubble jet. The air bubble jet is still a popular nozzle. Uh, operating at 50 psi, it will be a coarse spray quality. This is kind of a nozzle, uh, like its counterparts, uh, will make a spray, will make the spray a little bit finer as you increase the spray pressure, but it will also collapse the pattern a little bit earlier than the conventional nozzle. So you can see below 30 psi, not only is the spray getting very coarse, but the fan angle is also getting extremely narrow. For that reason, we try to operate this nozzle in a 60 to 70 psi uh, pressure range, give or take. Another nozzle on the market is the Greenleaf Air Mix. The Greenleaf Air Mix uh, is a lot like its other nozzles, uh, uh, operates nicely down to a lower pressure. stays relatively coarse even at high pressures. can easily go to 100 psi without being nearly as drift prone as the conventional flat fan nozzle was. The t AIXR, again, very much like the others. Lowest pressure, probably about 30 psi. Highest pressure, depends on how tolerant you are to spray pressure.
the HyperGuardian air nozzle, also known as the John Deere Low Drift Air or LDA. Very much like the other nozzles, produces a very fine spray at the higher pressure, so for coverage we can go there. Maintains a very reasonable spray pattern down to 30 psi or slightly lower perhaps in some cases. It should be operated like all the other ones between 60 and 70 psi. This is uh, one of the nozzles that I didn't write on the board, but I mentioned briefly. It's the Green Leaf Turbo Drop. It's one of the original low drift nozzles. Uh, it's a slight bit coarser and a little bit more money than the Green Leaf Air Mix, which uh, replaced it more or less, but it's still a very good nozzle. Operates nicely at higher pressures. Uh, might have a little bit of a higher minimum pressure, uh, but will probably go down to 30 psi. For uh, very good drift control, you might consider the uh, High Pro Ultra Low Drift, which is also known as the John Deere Ultra Low Drift Air, or ULA. Uh, this nozzle is a little bit unique in its uh, pattern. It has a very short body, uh, which makes it popular with some. And it's remarkably resistant to spray drift even at higher pressures. You can see even at this 90 and 100 psi pressure, the number of fine drops it generates are relatively small or relatively minimal. Um, at the same time, it still has a pretty decent pattern even at quite low pressures although they do get quite coarse. So a very interesting nozzle. This one is uh, suited for those that want a little bit better drift management than you might achieve with the conventional uh, low pressure air induction. For those that want something a little bit finer, uh, I mentioned the moving to a, a twin fan nozzle. This is just one. The topic of twin fans is a whole other topic we'll cover another day. Uh, but this is one way of taking that coarseness out of the spray because by dividing it across two, two orbs. But uh, an easier way to make the spray finer is simply go to a finer tip. If you need uh, higher flow and a little bit uh, finer droplets uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as well, then use the, the Guardian nozzle or a, or a Turbo T-Jet or some other nozzle that isn't quite as coarse by its nature. You don't necessarily have to go to a twin fan to be able to achieve uh, the cover.